maybe one of the most complicated configurations in all of security appliance configurations is the site-to-site -site VPN. We've got IPsec protocols. We've got phase one and phase two tunneling options. We've got encryption options and hashing options and authentication options. It's overwhelming at times when it comes to deploying a site-to-site -site VPN. So what we're talking about when we say a site-to-site -site VPN is I have subnets over here on my internal LAN. Maybe this is like 810.0.0.0 slash 8 subnet. Then we have the public internet. And then I have another site, another branch site over here with another MX firewall appliance. And maybe the internal LAN over here is 172.16.0.0 slash 24. What I need to have is pingability from my 10 subnet to my 172 subnet in a secure manner. I want these two sites to think they're both physically located in the same site or they have layer two or layer three connectivity to each other without traversing a public internet. That's what site-to-site -site VPNs do. They build secure tunnels from one branch to another and then allow routability from internal IP addresses. Again, like I say, traditionally, this was a very complicated task building these tunnels through the internet from one firewall appliance to the next. And it's unbelievable how easy this has become when you have a Meraki infrastructure. So let's pretend for a moment that I do have this MX firewall appliance here in my branch A, and I've now deployed a new MX firewall appliance over here in branch B, and I need to build a site-to-site -site tunnel from branch A to branch B so that branch A can access resources in branch B and vice versa. Here's how easy it would be to set up that site-to-site -site tunnel. From the security and SD-WAN panel here, I'm going to go over to the site-to-site -site VPN. And this is where we're going to get confronted with basically two choices to set up a site-to-site -site VPN from within this network. The first choice right here is this type choice. And this is asking us, what is going to be the role of our MX firewall? Let me just draw this right here. We have two options. We have the hub option or the spoke option. Let's talk about hub. When we have a hub and we say our MX firewall in this site is going to be a hub, that means it will automatically establish a VPN tunnel with all of the other hubs in our organization. So for instance, if I have an MX over here, maybe it's in a completely different state, and I set this to be a hub, and over here in my current branch, I set this one to be a hub, they will automatically build a site-to-site -site tunnel to each other. Then let's say I add another site, maybe my business expands, and I set this guy down here across town to be a hub, then it will automatically establish a tunnel to both of these. Ultimately, what this is saying is if we set every single one of our firewalls to be a hub, this will build a full mesh. And quite frankly, that's the easiest thing that there is to deploy. We just set every MX firewall to be a hub and it'll build a full mesh. Conversely, there is the option of choosing a spoke role for our MX firewall. So maybe we have another site down here and we only want to establish a site to site to one of these hubs. By choosing spoke, we can select which hub this needs to connect to. That is a specific thing about the spoke is it can only connect to a hub. So in this case, I could say just build a site to site to this one site right here. Maybe there is a file share service that's running here uh, and users in this site need to access that file share, but they don't need to access any other sites. Uh, a spoke would be a good deployment for this scenario. So let's clear the screen and choose hub. So with hub selected, now I'm telling my firewall, you're going to be a hub, build a site to site to every other hub. The last option that we need to choose is which subnets in this site need to traverse the tunnel. It's not that we build a hub and then all subnets are accessible across. We maybe don't want our management VLANs or guest Wi-Fi VLANs to traverse the site to site tunnel. So we'll be able to choose, say, the data VLAN. We do want that to traverse the site to site tunnel. All we have to do is choose that from the dropdown and click save. So that's all there is to it. That's all there is to it. All I have to do is tell it what kind of topology we're going to have. Does it need to be a full mesh or are we gonna specify individual hubs? And then what subnets on this network do I want to have traversing the VPN? Once I click save, that's it. Meraki will handle the rest. Meraki will build the IPsec tunnels from each branch to each other and allow traffic traversal over that site-to-site -site tunnel.
If there's any type of restrictions that we need to make, that's when we go back to our layer three firewall rules and specify which subnets are allowed to access which subnets and remote branches if we need to. But for now, once we click these buttons, the site to site tunnel will come up and our specified interior subnets will be able to traverse the site to site tunnels to get to those remote branches. It is worth pointing out. Let's do this. We'll put branch A and branch B. Just because I specify that branch A is able to traverse the tunnel doesn't mean it'll be able to get to anything in branch B. We also have to specify return traffic coming from branch B. So I would have to change into a different network and specify which subnets need to be allowed on the VPN in that branch too. But once we've specified which subnets can traverse the tunnel on both sides of the tunnel, we will then have routability and connectivity between our branches over a site to site. It's just as easy as specifying the topology and changing the dropdown for which VPN subnets are allowed to traverse the site to site tunnel. That's how you set up a site to site tunnel in a Meraki MX firewall topology. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.